While brainstorming a new video idea, I found myself revisiting this website we have explored before. You might remember it from past videos where we recreated some effects from this website like this 3D parallax animation and the animated circular image gallery. This time though, I noticed a few more standout animations that felt too good to ignore. One in particular really caught my attention, the scroll interaction where cards reveal themselves through a clipping mask. You can see at the same time, the previous card gets pushed back with a subtle parallax effect on the image itself. It looked stunning, so I decided to try recreating it. After some tinkering, I managed to build the exact same animation using GSAP and scroll trigger, which is responsive as well. In today's video, I'll walk you through how to rebuild this cool sticky card animation using Next.js. Our last video focused on vanilla JavaScript, so this time, I decided to build it using Next.js instead. If you'd like to see more animations like this done in Next.js, drop a like and maybe consider subscribing. You can access the source code through the Pro Membership, link is in the description. And for JavaScript users, I've also included a vanilla JS version of this project exclusively for Pro members. Alright, let's dive in. To save us some time, I've already set up a fresh Next.js project and got it running locally. Now let's clean up the boilerplate so we can start with a blank canvas. First. I'll head into the globals.css file and clear out all the default styles. Then I'll do the same with page.module.css file, just wiping it clean. Next, let's open the home component and remove all the default markup. We are going to build our own structure from scratch. I'll begin by adding a wrapper div with the class name container. For this layout, I'm creating three sections, intro, sticky guards, and outro. In the intro and outro sections, I'll place a heading element with some placeholder text. You could leave them empty, but I'm adding them just so the page doesn't look too bare. Before we structure the cards, let's bring in our assets. Inside the public directory, I've added a folder named assets. That's where I've placed five images that we'll be using inside our cards. Back in the component, let's move on to the main section, the sticky cards. Here, I'll add a div with the class cards container, which will hold all of our cards and define the layout space. Now let's create the first card. Each card will include a tag label using a paragraph element. And of course, an image source from the assets folder. Once that's set, I'll simply duplicate this card four more times and update the tag names and image paths. That's the entire basic structure done. Now it's time to move on to styling. First of all, I'll import two fonts from Google Fonts, DMSense and IBM Plex Mono. DMSense will be used for the general typography, while IBM Plex Mono will be used for the tag labels inside the cards. We start by resetting the default browser styles. Using a universal selector, I've removed all the default margin and padding and set box sizing to border box for consistent sizing. Next, I define the body font to use DMSense. For images, I am setting them to fill their container entirely. They are given position relative width 100% and height 100% along with object fit cover to maintain aspect ratio. Now let's style the main heading. The H1 is set to a flute font size of 5 viewport width with a font weight of 500. The line height is set to 1 with a slight negative letter spacing to bring the text tighter. I've also added some text indent. The text color is set to a soft gray and to improve rendering, I've also enabled font smoothing. Moving on to the section layout. Each section is set to take up the full viewport width and height. I've also added some padding for breathing space and the background color is set to a dark gray. I've also hidden any overflowing content with overflow set to hidden. The intro and outro sections use flexbox to center their content both vertically and horizontally. For the sticky card section, I've also applied flexbox centering but with a slightly darker background. Text color is set to white to make the elements pop. Now let's style the container that will hold all the cards. It is set to a width and height of 50% with a relative positioning. It also has a subtle border radius and overflow hidden to keep the images contained within the rounded corners. Each card inside it is positioned absolutely to stack on top of one another. They take up the full width and height of the container and share same border radius and overflow styles. 
Now comes the tag which displays the label on each card. It's positioned at the top left with a little padding and rounded corners. The background is set to pure black for contrast and its C index is increased so it appears above the images. For the tag, the text is transformed to uppercase and styled using IBM Plex Mono font. The font size is 12 pixels with a bold font weight and tight line height for a crisp, minimal look. Finally, let's make it responsive. Inside a media query for screens under 1000 pixels, we slightly bump up the h1 size to 7 viewport width and reduce the text indent to keep it readable. And we also make the card's container take up 95% width so it adapts better to smaller screens. That's it for the core styling. It's all set up now and ready for animation. Now let's install the dependencies. I'll open the terminal and install 3 packages. GSAP, GSAP's React plugin, and Lenis. Once everything is installed, I'll close the terminal and head back to our main component file. At the very top, we'll start by adding the use client directive. This tells Next.js to treat the component as a client component that allows us to use hooks, interact with the DOM, and work with animation libraries like GSAP. Next, we'll import userf hook from React. This will help us reference container element to set it as a scope for our GSAP animation. After that, we bring in GSAP, our main animation library for this project. We'll also import scroll trigger from GSAP to handle scroll based animations. And finally, we bring in the React Lenis component and use Lenis hook from Lenis. Lenis will give us that smooth scroll behavior throughout the page. First, let's configure Lenis. I'll initialize it using use Lenis hook. Then, to apply the smooth scrolling globally, I'll wrap the entire page with the React Lenis component. This sets up the Lenis context and activates smooth scrolling across the page. Alright, now that setup is done, let's move on to the key animation. First, I create a reference using useRef and call it container. This will let us target the entire layout from within our animations. Then, in the return block, I assign this reference to our main container div. Next, we use the use gsap hook provided by gsap and also provide a scope, in this case the container, to ensure that all the gsap selectors inside the use gsap hook will be scoped to the descendants of that container. Inside the animation function, we start by registering the scroll trigger plugin. This will allow us to create scroll based animations. Then I select all the card elements and all their nested image tags. I also grab the total number of cards using cards.length. Now before starting the animation, we need to set the initial state for each element. For the first card, we set its Y position to 0%, scale to 1 and rotation to 0, basically fully visible and centered. Same goes for the image inside, we scale it to 1. Now for every other card, I push them down using Y set to 100% while keeping their scale and rotation at default values. Here, we also make sure that the images for those are also set to scale of 1. Now let's start by creating a GSAP timeline and link it to scroll trigger. This timeline will control how our cards animate as we scroll down the page. The trigger is set to the sticky card section, so our scroll based animation kicks in. The start value is set to top, means the animation begins when the top of sticky section aligns with the top of the screen. The end is dynamically calculated based on the number of cards. We multiply the window's inner height by total cards minus 1. This gives us just enough scroll space to animate through all cards except the last one. We also pin the sticky card section in place during the scroll period using pin set to true. And we add scrub of 0.5 which links scroll progress to the timeline with a little delay for that smooth natural feel. Now inside a for loop, we go through each pair of cards, the current card and the one that follows. We animate every card except the last one because there is no next card after it. For each step, we get three things. Current card, the one currently in view. Current image, the image inside that card. And the next card, the upcoming card that will reveal. We also define a position based on the loop index. This position is used as the label in our GSAP timeline. It keeps all animations in sync as we scroll. 
Now for the actual animations, first we animate the current card. As we scroll, it scales down to 0.5 and rotates slightly, giving us the illusion that it's shrinking and moving back in 3D space. Next, we scale the image inside that card up to 1.5 times its original size. This adds a nice parallax-like zoom effect as the card moves away. And finally, we animate the next card. We slide it upward into view by moving its Y position to 0%. This gives us the feel that one card is pushing into the next place, almost like a layered stack unfolding as we scroll. And since we are using a timeline, all three animations for each step are synced perfectly using the same position. This loop repeats until we have animated through all the cards. Now, one last but important step, cleanup. We return a function that kills the timeline and all scroll triggers when the component unmounts. This is important for performance, it prevents any lingering animations or memory leaks when we navigate away from the page. And that's it. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.